Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Maddie Jansen. We begin with that breaking news out of Fresno in the federal courtroom there where disgraced former Bakersfield police officer Patrick Mara was just sentenced to five years in prison. Despite a recommendation of a sentence more than five times that long from the U.S. attorney. 17's Jason Galvin is live this afternoon in Fresno after just leaving the courtroom. Jason, what can you tell us about what went on inside? Well, Maddie, things started dramatically differently uh, today for Patrick Mara. He arrived just as we were arriving, along with many of the other media members here, about 9 a.m., and walked into the Fresno Federal Courthouse alone. About five or ten minutes later, Assistant U.S. Attorney Brian Delaney walked in, and a few minutes after that, Mara's attorney, Fred Galliardini, also walked into the courthouse. Now, once we were inside, uh, Mara was joined by his wife, by his children, his parents, and about a dozen or so friends and other family members, and uh, those friends friends and family members that joined Mara. Uh, that's uh, significantly less than the amount that joined Masio Diaz. And ultimately, Patrick Mara, has sentenced to five years in prison, uh, is exiting the courtroom right now, actually, with his attorney, Fred Gallardini. We're going to see if uh, Mr. Mara is going to take a statement and try to take this live here uh, as he walks out. And it appears he is going to talk to us. So uh, we will turn things over to uh, Patrick Mara and his attorney, Fred Gallardini. Uh, again, I want to take this uh, time to publicly apologize to the Bakersfield Police Department, all of my former colleagues who I disgraced and shamed uh, their badge and uniform. Uh, I'm ashamed of my actions, ashamed of myself. I uh, apologize to the citizens of Bakersfield for betraying the trust that they had a uh, place in me and um, I'd also like to I guess debunk some of uh, what's been going on uh, the past couple months as far as uh, allegations of corruption and other officers being involved uh, at the advice of my attorney I obviously have had to sit quietly and wait for my day in court but um, the five or six guys that were off on admin or are still off on admin, they never had anything to do with any criminal conspiracy that we were a part of. They never got paid a dime from anything that happened. The only thing that they did was uh, what they thought was their job. They were unknowing uh, and unwitting participants in, in any of the, the stuff that happened. And uh, they were absolutely in no way uh, Part of what Demasi and I did. You're uh, saying that none of your f former officers in the police department that you worked with accepted any money at any point for any of the drugs that were exchanged? That's correct. There were some questions on the times that officers were asked to pull over a certain cars. Did, what did they know or not know about being asked to pull over a vehicle? What was their um, participation in those instances? Uh, th those were typical of car stops that narcotics detectives would have patrol units do. I mean, we would tell them to stop the car and, hey, there might be this, there might be that, and show up and, uh, you know, we would take possession of, of what was in the car. So they had no idea what you and Demacio were doing? No, they had no idea and didn't take any part in what Demacio and I did. Patrick, your attorney sealed three documents in court from uh, last week that were filed. Can you tell us what were in those documents? Was that uh, something maybe debunking what you're saying now? That I'll answer that one. I didn't, I didn't seal any documents. The AUSA, the assistant U.S. attorney, is required to seal certain types of documents and letters uh, describing uh, any cooperation that a defendant may have given uh, in what continues to be an ongoing investigation, but not as it is directed at the Bakersfield Police Department. Can you tell us about the, the third person involved in this ring that uh, Judge O'Neill and the U, uh, U.S. Attorney indicated today was a personal friend of yours? No, no. I'm not going to get into any of that with you guys. Mr. Mara, how, how do you feel about this sentence that you got today? You went in there not knowing what, what, what would happen, and so what's your feeling now? Um, obviously I've had a lot of time to sit and, you know, wait and sleepless nights and, uh, as much as I'm not excited about the, the thought of, uh, being away from my family and, 
relieved to at least have this part of it over. Do you believe five years is, is fair? I know that I know that I committed crimes and I have to pay for those crimes. So I'm I'm willing to accept what the judge issued. The judge spoke directly to your children and I was watching your daughter during I think the time that your wife was speaking and she was constantly dabbing at her eyes. What did you think of what the judge said to your little kids? I don't want to I don't want to talk about my my kids and I thought family. it was very sweet that he reached out to them specifically. Yeah. What do you plan to do before turning yourself in? What are your plans over the next month and a half? Uh, try and get my family situated and get them stable. Do you, have, do you have a message to the public at this point? You alluded to that, but I just wanted to add, give you another opportunity. Uh, I mean, you were there to serve the community of Bakersfield, so at this point, do you have a message to them? I would say that the uh, officers at the Bakersfield Police Department uh, do a great job keeping you guys safe. Um, my actions and uh, Demacia's actions are in no way uh, a representation of what we were taught or what we believed in or anything that's remotely acceptable to the uh, Bakersfield Police Department. Um, that's, in court, you said it was simply greed that turned you in that direction. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about well, actually, that? Actually, if I could correct that, actually yeah. what he said was it was weakness. Weakness. The, the word was weakness. Yeah. The judge said greed. So uh, you can thank you, sir. <laughs> no so problem. You said it was weakness, so can you expand expand on that? Uh, I mean, at, at that time in my life, I was... Yeah, I was... Uh, I don't know, going through a rough patch and I folded to temptation and now I now I get to deal with the consequences of those actions. Ready to go with your family? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Mr. Gagler, do you need anything else you want to tell us about this case? Are about you... the case, no. But I would request with the judge saying that once your life gets distilled down and everything else is gone, all the chaff's blown away, it's three things that are important. God, your family, and your friends. And you can see what he's going through right now. Are you satisfied with what your client received today? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Considering the uh, prior counsel he got from uh, uh, the lawyer before, I know you weren't up there, but there was a lawyer that uh, had been giving Mr. Uh, Mr. Marr legal advice. And that advice, I think, worked to Mr. Marr's detriment in a lot of ways it took away options that would have made today less painful for he and his family and that's an embarrassment to me as a lawyer to, to have seen that have you reached out to that council at all uh, no that wouldn't be appropriate thanks thank you sir. Fred Galliardini and Patrick Mara there are responding to the sentence again. Patrick Mara receiving uh, the same sentence as Demacio Diaz, five years in federal prison. Of note, Mara will serve five years probation when he is released. Diaz was sentenced to just three, and Mara is out uh, on his own remand. He is due to turn himself in at the same date and time as Demacio Diaz. That's 2 p.m. December 5th. We'll have much more tonight on 17 News at 5. Live in Fresno, Jason Galvin, 17 News.